The motion picture situation was, was fraught with all kinds of uh, problems. I went out to Elstree Studios in, in August 1966 to give my first demonstrations of noise reduction as applied to uh, film soundtracks. I wanted to make it easy on myself. I said, I'll, I'll just show these people how they can improve their, their magnetic dubbers um, by adding noise reduction. And I was shocked during the couple of days that I was working uh, out there at Elstree Studios to see the appalling state of, of the manuf design, manufacture, and maintenance of, 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 this, uh, of this equipment. I realized that a lot of work had to be done cleaning up existing practices bef before it would be worthwhile applying noise reduction to, um, to these magnetic dubbers, let alone the, the optical soundtrack. For example, the so-called ground noise reduction circuit in, in, uh, in uh, optical recording was clipping off all the transients so that the transients uh, were, were mangled. Uh, it couldn't respond fast enough. So, so by, by introducing time delay into the recording process, let's say 50 milliseconds worth of time delay, we, we were able to solve that problem. There were other issues like the kind of equalization that was being used, the so-called academy curve, which was causing the film to saturate under high frequency conditions because of the this, this steep uh, pre-emphasis used for high frequencies. There's a whole bunch of little things like that that, that we did. We, we considered various ways of, of uh, creating digital soundtracks on, on or with film. We considered putting the, the sound separate from the film on a tape recorder or on optical discs, magnetic discs. We considered putting the sound in various places on the film, such as uniformly spread over the film in some way. We thought about putting the sound on the outside edges uh, uh, of, of the film, in between the, uh, uh, the picture areas, right along the very edges of, of the uh, soundtracks or, or along the sprocket holes, in the sprocket hole areas. We, we thought about all the possibilities you can imagine. And we made some tests, found out that the area that was most protected from abrasion was, surprisingly, the space between the sprocket holes. There's, there's wear in other areas, like on the outside ed edges. And we found out that the space between the sprocket holes was so robust that the picture would wear out b b before, before that space between the sprocket holes wore out. <laughs>